Uh, the Honourable Nikki Kay. Mr Speaker, I'm very pleased to speak on the Prime Minister's statement. If you were listening to this debate, you would have heard a lot of slogans. But actually, when I read the Prime Minister's statement, I see a very clear vision for New Zealand. It's very clear, and it's very clear that there's a very big contrast in this House between the opposition and the government. The vision is an open, democratic nation that is connected to the world, where we live in a place where every young person has the ability to have access to decent health and education services. And let's look at what has actually happened over the last seven years and where we're going. So let's take the first issue, our economy. We hear a lot from the opposition about how much they care about business. They turn up, they have the cocktail functions. But when it comes to the crunch, one of the biggest things that will affect so many of our exporters, where are they? They've gone. They've ditched our exporters because the reality is the emails that were coming into me in Auckland Central, yes, where there were those people opposed, but there were a whole lot of exporters that understood the basic concept that a deal that would reach 800 million people, 11 nations, that would lead to, if not signed, a whole lot of uh, businesses, small and large, having tariffs on them that other countries wouldn't happen, it was inconceivable to them that we would not sign it. In fact, I think it was one exporter who said to me, we would literally have our hands tied behind our backs. So the Labour Party took a good game, but when it comes to the crunch, they can't sign the deal, and actually they're all over the place. We know former Prime Minister Helen Clark where she sits on this. And I do want to acknowledge her. You know, she quite clearly understands the issue for New Zealand to not sign this thing. We understand where Phil Goff sits on this. He's a former trade minister. He quite practically understands a $2.7 billion deal for our country and what that means. We actually understand where David Shearer sits on this, but he's been muzzled by his leader. And so the reality is half of the Labour caucus support this deal, but because of petty politics, they have not been able to step up and do the right thing for New Zealand. We are a government we, we, who has a prime minister who is outward looking uh, and who is walking the talk and signing deals like TPP. I want to acknowledge the Honourable Tim Grosser. When it comes to the economy, we are a government that were handed billions of dollars in a hole in the ACC books. I'm Minister for ACC. We now have a situation where we've been able to put back in New Zealanders' pockets 1.5 billion. We've got $450 million coming back. That's motor vehicle levies being cut. That's businesses levies being cut. That is actually real. In contrast, we were handed a complete shambles in terms of the books. When it comes to other areas of the economy, the reality is, if you listened again to the opposition, you would hear a completely different level of slogans and a completely different world, that the average wage in New Zealand has gone up $10,000 under our government. It's now at $57,000. But again, um, our vision is more than that. It's not just about the economy. When it comes to infrastructure, we were handed a massive deficit. I'm an Associate Minister for Education. Let me walk you through the numbers. We were handed leaky buildings. We were handing old buildings. More than 60% of the buildings in New Zealand uh, were, uh, were over uh, 60 years old. What happened? 2.7 billion under seven years under Labour. We have put $4 billion. We are literally are fixing these schools all across New Zealand more than ever before. No government has undertaken such a social infrastructure upgrade of our schools than this government. So if people want to talk about a government that cares, that's one example. Let's talk about the other examples. When it comes to health, we have a whole lot of young people that we want to ensure that they get access to the doctor. Which government was it? It was our government that said, right, we're going to give free under 13 visits to young people in New Zealand. We've delivered that. When it came to the issue, and it was raised by the Green Party, uh, breakfast in schools, it was our government that has put millions of dollars enabling those schools that want it, not compulsory, not making sure that every school has to have um, set, uh, set times for their particular breakfasts. We actually said to schools, it's up to you if you want it, but we will enable those young people to get access to breakfast. 
when it came to insulating houses. 350,000 houses later. Again, this is set out in the Prime Minister's clear vision for New Zealand, a country that is focused on opening our, our uh, many businesses up to the world, having access to those markets, having access to decent incomes, but also enabling some of our most vulnerable to get better support. And it's our record in those areas that I've just outlined which is very clear. When it comes to infrastructure spend, let's look again in Auckland. Again, we hear a lot of slogans from the opposition about the Kiwi Dream and all of these things, and we hear a lot of slogans about the fact that, that uh, we shouldn't be investing so much in roads, but here are the facts around rail in Auckland. It was our government who has put $1.5 billion into the electrification of rail, and I was very pleased to be with the Prime Minister when we confirmed that we are looking to bring forward the central rail link. What is that about? That is actually about jo Prime Minister John Key will be responsible for delivering the vital artery in Auckland's rail system. That is a project that will lead to not just the people of central Auckland benefiting at all. It's the people of West Auckland and South Auckland that are literally going to have half of their journey times slashed in half. That is a compassionate government. That is a government that is not just investing in roads, but also public transport. Again, we are spending billions of dollars ensuring that our young people are connected to the world. That is a connected nation, uh, whether it is the ultra-fast broadband pr um, program, which has been a couple of billion dollars. We are one of the only countries in the world, and this is something that I am most proud of, when I leave Parliament, this is one of the things that I am most proud of. We said, when we came in, that we were going to do everything we could to connect New Zealand schools. And we have not only said that we are going to put the fibre in the ground, we are going to enable every school that wants it to have access to fast connections, reliable connections, funded by the Crown. We are, we believe, one of only a couple of countries in the world that are delivering that. We are roaring ahead with that programme. More than 90% of New Zealand schools have been connected to that, and that is paid for by us because we believe in a nation that is globally connected where every young person gets that opportunity. So again, we hear a lot from the opposition about the Kiwi Dream. The Prime Minister's statement was very clear. An open nation connected to the world where every young person gets better access to equality of opportunity. And it is our government in so many areas from education to insulating houses to under 13 um, visits, to investing in infrastructure and catching up with the massive deficit that we have been left in areas like rail and transport and ultra-fast broadband. Uh, that is incredibly significant. And we have done this at one of the most difficult times in terms of our history with the global financial uh, situation, but also with the Canterbury earthquakes. And as Minister of Civil Defence, can I say this? There is a lot of talk around um, the Canterbury rebuild, but I have had the good fortune of meeting ministers from across the world. I do want to say that about the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Um, it is one of the most um, complex uh, processes to basically try and rebuild a city. And I think not only from the Prime Minister's leadership on pretty much day one to say we will rebuild that city, we, and we've spent you know, 17 billion on doing that, but also the dedication and the huge amount of work that the Honourable Jerry Brownlee does every day to ensure that we are rebuilding that city. But the reality is there are many situations across the world where we can see that this does take a bit of time and we acknowledge the people of Canterbury um, and their patience through this period. But at the end of the day, we've put up the money and we're absolutely committed and working through that. But this is a government that, that has not only compassion, uh, that has the right policies from a fiscal perspective, but actually is the government that is walking the talk when it comes to the Kiwi dream.